Good afternoon, lazy afternoon here in Calgary. I've been out for my wheel. It's quite nice. Global Fest is going on, so I may go down and check out some of the food courts later. Who knows? But uh, I was just reading up on a number of the Facebook communities I'm involved with, and uh, thought I'd do a quick little video based on a number of them because, again, it's my perspective, and it's something I can relate to well, and that's the uh, growth of medication over the years. Uh, I've said many times, many of my friends will tell you that I've always been a subscriber to Better Living Through Chemistry, uh, but that's what we're going to talk about. But times have changed. And when I go back to the days when, when I would joke about better living through chemistry, the chemistry set was a lot smaller then uh, compared to what it is now. And a lot of that growth really took off in the 80s. Uh, it was antibiotics uh, in the 50s and 60s, but in the uh, 70s and 80s, we got more into the psychological aspects. I mean, what uh, Valium has only been around since the mid-60s. So, But point is, the, 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 the range of medications really began to grow. Oh, this is convenient. You know, I was sitting here trying to think of a movie I might be watching later while I'm making this. And uh, the theme song from uh, Charades Fire came on, so that may be the movie I watched tonight. Anyway, back to this one. So, throughout the 80s, I worked... Uh, a psychiatry in a hospital in Calgary. Uh, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of medication used. And the medication just getting broader, kept getting broader and broader. Uh, and it was quite often needed, but quite often overprescribed too. It became the treatment rather than a step towards. Uh, that type of use, or using it that way, also became an ingrained way of thinking. It was easy to do what well, we call them chemical restraints. Give somebody enough um, Haldol, uh, they're going to be quite quiet for a while. I think the other thing that has to be acknowledged is in that same time, in the 70s and 80s, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, spectrum of uh, uh, developmental and, and psychological disorders was much narrower. Uh, it just was. Uh, in the 80s when I was working, uh, you didn't see, I remember I think in, in 10 years, saw two cases of autism. You didn't see that. You know, they just weren't being diagnosed. Same with fetal alcohol syndrome, uh, you know, a whole lot of disorders that uh, became much more uh, diagnosable in the 90s for some reason. However, that philosophy of uh, uh, medicating continues, continues today, and we're using medications now on kids, on disorders where these medications were never really designed uh, to be used, but it's still easier to medicate. What scares me the most about that is it's easier to medicate and cut back on staff, and therefore we don't treat. So, you tell me, whose interest is this really in? Is this really, the next time a caseworker looks at you and says, this is in the best interest of the child, I'd be staring her right back in the eyes, or him, and saying, hey, or is this in the best interest of the pharmaceutical industry? End of story. 